Hey guys, this is Mr. Tapeball here. Um, here we're gonna today we're gonna do a reaction slash retrospective video on our first me and my sister's first time at New York Comic Con. Just kind of give our opinions on it, what we thought was really cool, and what we think would be an improvement for the con going forward. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video. So. Uh, so yeah, this is our first time going to the con, to New York Comic Con, that is. Um, and I thought it was a pretty, like, kind of stressful, but also very thrilling experience. Um, it was definitely fun. It was a little less organized than I would have liked. Not as many signs around for where to go for things mm -hmm. as past conventions that we've been to. Yeah. Like this was this was I think our fourth con like major convention we've been to because we've been to, uh, Trivicon and Connecticut, Rhode Island Comic Con, CT Horror Fest as some of my viewers have seen before, and I think that's it. We've been to CT Horror Fest twice. Yes, all other cons we've been to first, um, and New York Comic Con is the biggest one we've been to so far. And I do agree that it, like, granted, it was, like, the first big one since COVID-19. Um, so that made it really more packed than it's been before, I think. Because um, some of our friends have gone there before, and they said this year was kind of small. So I can't imagine what it would be like at, like, full capacity with huge stars. Because it was really packed. Like, if there was a fire, people probably would have gotten trampled to death or something right and the escalators kept breaking down mm -hmm. which is super unsafe yeah that was kind of scary like it was kind of like like you mentioned how it was like final destination five or something yeah. um granted i think there they got their hair trapped in it i don't remember i don't know every time we walked up it when it wasn't working i was worried it would start up and we would fall to our deaths mm -hmm. i mean luckily no one got hurt as far as we were aware. I mean, we only went there on Sunday because we couldn't really afford to be there all four days. It would have been cool. Um, and that's definitely one thing I think I would recommend if anyone hasn't gone there before like we have. Definitely try and go there for at least two days because there's so much to do and trying to rush through everything, it, it gets very exhausting really quickly. Yeah, I, I think also if you have more than one of the quote-unquote like A-lister celebrities that you want to see, you definitely want to go there more than one day. Because we had a couple that would have been awesome, but the lines are so long and there's so much to do that if you're willing to wait in that line, it'll take up most of your day, if not all of your day. Yeah, like we, we're, we're big Outlander fans. As you, 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 my viewers, you guys will eventually learn. Um, so we got to see Sam Hune, Dun Duncan, Duncan LaCroix, LaCroix. and the David Barry. Yeah, who plays John Gray in the series. And that was really cool. Um, granted, we only got to take pictures with them, so we didn't get the chance to like talk with them, really. Um, but it was still really cool getting to meet those guys. And those guys are huge Super in real life huge. like they're like six foot five or something they All look a lot them. shorter in the show but i guess most people in scotland and england and ireland are a lot taller than americans i guess or yeah. maybe we're just shorter um and yeah, i felt like we'd have a shadow on our faces with mm. them standing behind us because they're so tall it was also funny too because like, we got into Outlander because of our mom, because of the books, and, like, pretty much all of the fans wanting to see Outlander, those Outlander actors, were all, like, middle-aged moms or teachers, yeah. which I thought was pretty funny. We were some um, of the youngest, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it was cool getting a talk with all like-minded fa fans and everything, but still kind of funny and a little bit weird, but still. But, yeah, we, we tried getting to see... Um, who was it? Prince Caspian, what's his name? Ben Barnes, who I adore, and I really wanted to see him. And we tried we tried standing in his line two separate times, but it was just not budging. Mm -hmm. He he seemed to be 
other than Oscar Isaac, the most popular guy. Yeah. And then it would have been cool to see Christopher Lloyd, but he was in panels a lot, so he wasn't there a lot of times when we walked over. Mm -hmm. So it just wasn't in the cards this year. But what, what was the show, um, Prince Caspian? I forget his name. but he Ben Barnes. Yeah. Shadow and Bone. Yeah. I haven't watched that, but that's what most of the people in line were there were for, for him were. I've watched it. I liked it. I also love him in Dorian Gray. He's really good in The Punisher. He's just also a gorgeous man, so <laughs> he's good. Um, but yeah, that w it would have been cool to meet him. Um, he seemed really nice. Like He was giving hu hugs to fans and everything. Um, and yeah, there was other big A-listers there that day. Like, Brennan Frazier was there. We didn't um, see him at all. He was either in panels or some something like that all day because we couldn't even get a glimpse of him and um daniel radcliffe was supposed to be there but we didn't see him i mean granted if you guys don't know like new york comic con it's like one of the biggest cons in the u.s i think and this building was like four levels and we only went on two levels i think well, the or three. The basement level is all meant to be like playing games. So like Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons, and then there was a bunch of like video games. That's what all those signs were saying. And we talked to one of the guys, sort of helping people out. And then the second floor was like the merchandise, which we didn't get to walk around as much mm -hmm. as we probably would have liked to. And then there was, like, another floor that was, like, half other basement, sort of a second floor. It was weird. Mm -hmm. That's where the comic people were and the celebrities. And then there was a fourth floor, which we have no idea what that was. I assume Daniel Radcliffe and a bunch of the other cast for, um, what's his name? The Al Weird, Weird Al. Weird Al. Yeah, I was going to say Randy Newman. <laughs> That's a totally different singer. Weird um, Al Yankovic. For his um, biopic movie. But we didn't see anyone. I was surprised there wasn't as many Harry Potter there. I mean, maybe he canceled I last feel minute. Because like he was only going to be there on Sunday. He must have gotten sick or something. Because I feel like we would have known if he was there somehow. Because I feel like people would have been going crazy. Not like, Harry Potter is there. Yeah. Know? Not that he hasn't done other awesome things. But come on, he's yeah. Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. I'm a big comic book guy, as you guys will find out later in content for this channel. So, like, getting to meet a bunch of my favorite comic book artists and writers and publishers was really cool. Like, the, when we first got there, I wanted to go to Artist Alley because, reportedly, it's always good to go there first thing since a lot of people will go for, like, big-name actors first. So the comic book artists and writers, their lines will be relatively short. So yeah, the first major guest we got to see was Joe Prado, who you guys might know as an inker slash artist for primarily DC Comics. Um, you guys might know him mainly for his work on Jeff Johns' Green Lantern run, like Blackest Night and Brightest Day, and he was really nice. Um, and I didn't know, because like, in a lot of the cons we've been to before, um, when you had to get signatures from comic book artists, you had to pay at least like $20 per signature. But I guess at New York Comic Con, since so, so many people bring like suitcase loads of comics, that they say they give like the fir first three comics you bring are free for most comic book artists and writers. So I got my copy of Blackest Night signed by him for free, which was really cool. And he got to personalize it since I was wearing a Blue Lantern shirt. And I was able to buy a piece of original um, Brightest Day Green Lantern art from him, uh, which was um, drawn by him and Ivan Reyes, which was awesome. Like, that's the holy grail of my current comic book collection right now. So that was really cool. I also feel like they might have been free because it is New York Comic Con, so they are, no matter what, going to be getting a lot of revenue. Whereas the other ones were so small, not so small, but in comparison, smaller than this. Well, maybe not Rhode Island. Rhode Island was fairly big, but, you know, they, they have to charge to get their, their due with being there. But when you're at New York Comic Con, I mean, it's the second biggest one 
at least in this continent. Mm -hmm. Like, I think the only other bigger con around is San Diego Comic Con, right. which we'll probably never be able to go to because of how crowded and expensive it is. But who knows? Maybe one day with your support. Maybe. <laughs> um, all right. So the second um, guest I think we got to see were was Ryan Parrott, who you guys might know as primarily the writer for Boom Studios Power Rangers comics, and he's the writer for his Image Comics creator-owned Rogue Sun series, I think it's called. And he was really cool, um, really down to earth. Like, I brought in my deluxe copy of Power Rangers Shattered Grid, and he was, like, really impressed that I had that, because apparently those get sold out really quickly, and apparently they don't even give copies of those del deluxe editions to the writers and artists which i thought was kind of insane um but yeah he was really cool and he signed it and then i got to meet kyle higgins who also wrote power rangers and is the writer for um radiant black image comics and he was really cool too um although he got a little bit distracted from talking with other people but that's fine because of that he kind of gave me a free copy of um, this special issue of Radiant Black, which is all like foldable. So I kind of got that for free because really it was like $50. They just kind of gave it to me. So, or maybe I stole it. I don't know. Anyway, it was, it was really funny. Um, and then we got to meet Ivan Reyes, who is also a comic book artist with um, Jeff John's Green Lantern Run. And he was really cool. He got to sign my Black Snack copy too and Green Lantern Seeker Origin. Um, I didn't get a piece of original art from him, and granted, he did also draw the piece I got from Joe Prado, but he had a lot of really cool art, like this art of Kyle Rayner Parallax, but it was like $1,000, so I couldn't afford that. And then we also got to meet, um, uh, James Tyne IV, who you guys might know as the writer for Something is Killing the Children, The Department of the Truth, Batman, Justice League Dark, and so many other great titles. Um, and he was really cool because I wrote an article about an article review about the Department of Truth and when it's first coming out when I was in college and I showed him that um, issue the article I wrote about it, and he was really impressed like it seemed like he would never saw anything like that from anybody and he was really happy to see that and I really liked that so I got him to sign my article and sign my copy of the Department of Truth um, and I got I was able to buy a a bandana mask from something is killing the children so he was really cool and then I also got to meet Charles Soule you guys probably know as the main writer for uh, Marvel's Darth Vader comic and the main line Star Wars comic right now and he was really cool too um, and I think that was all the comic book artists I got to meet that I at least that I at least wanted to meet there were some others I wanted to meet but their lines were either too long or they just didn't show up but that's the thing with going on a con on Saturday, on Sunday. Some people that just don't show up because it's the last day. Plus, there was some that were there that you've met already in the past, so you had to prioritize. True. Like in Rhode Island, or was it Trificon? I don't remember. One of those I met. In one of those, I met Donnie Cates, who was at the at New York Comic Con too. But I met him already. So I got my stuff I wanted to sign for him. Plus, I don't really sell a lot of things I sign, get signed. Like, I keep, I get things signed that I really enjoy as a reader. I don't really resell comics, at least not yet. Um, they just go directly to my collection and in my hearts. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, talking about, like, some of the other stuff with the cons, like, the show floor with all the products was really cool. Yeah, I, I kind of wish that we had more time to walk around even though there just literally wasn't i mean we got there right well we got there like an hour before it opened so we were there right when we could be and then stayed basically until they were making people leave so we literally just couldn't spend that much time but there was some really neat like just displays for things like there was a huge lounge fly display for you know like the fancy backpacks and purses and things like that that was also with Funko Pop but you had to apparently buy a special VIP ticket for that so we weren't allowed to go in it 
But it was this huge house, like a haunted house. It looked very interesting. And everyone that came out of there had like huge bags that looked like they were filled just with Funko Pops. And there was a bunch of interesting things that you could pose with and just really awesome nerdy things like cool t-shirts cool game memorabilia just all over the place I also personally love looking at like the art and the graphics and just seeing the different things that people come up with especially a mashup art they're very very cool to me yeah like um there too there was also a big um area where guys were playing video games And yeah, I almost forgot that on that same floor, they did have some guests too on the product floor, which I thought was kind of weird, but uh, like Austin St. John, the original Red Power Ranger was there, and I got him to sign my copy of Power Ranger Shadow Grid 2, and that was really cool. Um, I also forgot, I also got the artist for some of those comics, Dan Moore, to sign it too. So now my copy of Shadow Grid has... The original writers, Ryan Parrott, Kyle Higgins, an artist, Dan Mora, and original Power Ranger, Austin St. John, which I think is amazing. Um, Because my goal is eventually to get as many Power Rangers actors as I can to sign that book. Since it's like a multiversal crossover book, I think that'd be awesome. Um, But yeah, there's a bunch of other cool stuff on the floor, like um, IDW and um, Boom had um, displays there. Like, where they had um, the last Ronin TMNNT display. And there was a bunch of anime stuff for Crunchyroll. Um, and Marvel had a big thing where they're doing giveaways. And it was like a rock concert where people were having their kids go on their shoulders and everything. Like, that was kind of crazy. That was for, like, the last ten minutes, too. Like, you didn't hear people talking about it until they were like, the convention closes in ten minutes. And they had a, um, like, a t-shirt launcher and different things that they were throwing to the audience. We didn't see what any of them were. They were doing a lot of hyping up before actually showing what the products were. But it looked very interesting. A lot of, like, exclusive things. They had a bunch of really cool things that were New York Comic Con merch also. Oh, yeah, like the Playbill shirt. Yes. That was really cool. There was a really awesome Playbill shirt that was, like, a huge, like, rat (laughs) with a cheese superhero cake yeah i don't get the deal what's the deal with that rat because it because it's new york rats rats roam the street but there was also a lot of like cool um sort of tattoo art styled comic con merch that i thought was awesome and then they had some exclusives too from other um different kinds of nerdy clothing lines like her universe things like that it was yeah. pretty interesting. We didn't really get to get any New York Comic Con branded stuff since a lot of it was sold out by Sunday. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to get that kind of stuff, definitely try to go on Thursday or Friday um, going forward. Um, it was still really cool getting just to see what they had, even though it was sold out a lot of the time. Um, but yeah, like some of the Funko stuff like you mentioned before would have been cool to get. But I guess they're kind of like unlock and key. Even though some of them were being sold through Walmart online, which was kind of weird. Um, like they had a Ben 10 Fungal Pop, which I really wanted to get, but couldn't actually get there. But maybe you can still get it on Walmart. Who knows? Um, but yeah, there was also um, some really cool cosplays yeah. there too. I was just going to say we should talk about which ones stood out to us. Which ones do you think stood out to you? I really loved... I don't I don't know if this is a character, but there was one lady walking around, and she was in this beautiful, like, mushroom fairy witchy costume, and she made herself have these extra arms that were tied to her arms. So anytime she would move her actual hands, these would move with her. And she had a huge mushroom top hat. And the makeup was gorgeous. She must have spent hours putting this on, putting it together. I imagine she probably started, like, the night before. Because to to be there, you had to get there early. The line was crazy. Once it opened, it moved. But 
it probably would have been insane to get there after opening. But she was cool. We saw her a few times. And she was very, like, like blue and white, very mystical, like something you might see in Dungeons & Dragons or Lord of the Rings or something. Yeah, I think she was a character from Dungeons & Dragons, but I'm not sure specifically. Um, there were also these two girls that are dressed up as Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn. We didn't actually get to see them, but I saw them in the entrance, and that was awesome. Because Horizon's one of my favorite games of all time. So that was always cool getting to see people cosplay like that. Um, one of the other ones, cool ones too, that we got to see were there was the two Mandalorian cosplayers that dressed up their armor like Gar like regular Gyarados and shiny red Gyarados from Pokemon. That was a pretty cool um, take on the Mandalorian armor, I think. There was a couple people that were doing that sort of like bent Mandalorian armor, like mash up with something else not all of them were necessarily as advanced as those two those those two looked really f professional but there was some there was one person that was doing like a like loki if he was mandalorian which i thought was pretty pretty cool an interesting concept those i think are like my favorite cosplays that are like bringing different concepts together I think there was one too I saw where it was the Predator, but it was mixed with like Kratos from God of War. That was pretty cool. Like it had the red markings on the Predator mask. And there was just a bunch of people dressed up as Kratos too for Ragnarok coming out soon. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, I can't think of any other really cool cosplayers that are popping out to me right now. Um, there definitely was a lot. I know for me, I'm in my mind, I'm like getting mixed up with which was at New York Comic Con and which was at CT Horror <laughs> Fest because we went um, fairly close together with those two. Uh, but they're, you know, one of the big things of Comic Con is just awesome cosplays. So, of course, you'll always see someone that you're like, oh my god. Yeah, we always wanted to try and cosplay too, but it just costs so much money and time to make really good costumes. And we don't, don't, we don't want to make like really cheap looking ones i mean we we tried doing stuff like that before um like for cd horror fest we tried doing some horror themed cosplays because those are, those are kind of easier than like big comic book or movie cosplays um but you know, maybe one day we'll do something cool yeah i feel like if if you're gonna do it if you if you can afford to and you have the time to it's a great challenge to try to go all out with it and probably awesome and super fun just to do the process but yeah overall i'd say the con was really exciting a little bit stressful um the bathrooms too be prepared to wait even for us guys you gotta wait for lines because it's crazy there definitely was a good amount of bathrooms it's just that there was so many people that yeah. it was crazy um and food too there wasn't as much food there and being new york it's not really easy to find food going out in the city especially well, where the the con is located because it's, it's located on the edge of the islands it's not that it's hard to find food it's hard to find food that's not super expensive that's a sit down dinner that's what it is <laughs> there was like uh, they had like a bunch of spin your own cotton candy machines and things like soft pretzels thing just and there was a whole line of food trucks when you come in but it seemed like it would be hard to come in and go out and come in again to get the food from there and i imagine you know there's not really s seating so it's it's probably very difficult to walk around while you're eating those types of food like they were things like very sloppy burgers and mm. um Popcorn. Yeah, popcorn, Lots of popcorn tacos. That smells great, but we never had any. Yeah, it just uh I definitely something where it's like maybe have a good breakfast, you can get little snacks in there, and then just have a nice dinner after, because it's probably just better to do it that way than to try to do it otherwise. I think there was like a cafeteria thing, but it 
it was basically like a Starbucks, so not really food food just little appetizers again oh yeah i forgot to mention there was a lot of people cosplaying for moon Knight, so that was pretty cool yeah yeah oscar isaac definitely was the main guy i feel a little bad because it was supposed to be brennan frazier and then they added oscar isaac and he kind of there was a lot of people dressing up as brennan frazier's character in the mummy but i noticed there was a lot that looked more like Indiana Jones than his actual character just because they would try to incorporate like a hat and it to me I feel like their costumes are so similar you should do a little distinction like in the mummy he kind of wears an ascot sometimes maybe add that Mm -hmm. to be like I am not Indiana Jones even though that's a great character but felt a little bad I'm like Brendan Fraser's coming out for the first time in a long time and uh, Oscar Isaac kind of stole his thunder a little bit. Yeah. Not that you're not a good actor, but Brendan Fraser is a treasure. I mean, I'm not a big Oscar Isaac fan myself. Like, sure, he's okay in Star Wars and X-Men, but I don't know. I think he's a little bit cocky for my taste, but that's just me. If we, like, saw Brendan Fraser around and knew that he was there, I definitely would have liked to have tried to get in his line. But like I said before, we... Every time we were near him, you you didn't even see him sitting there. So, you know, shoulda, woulda, coulda, I guess. But there's always okay. next year. Yeah, maybe they maybe he'd come back because it seems like his fans are accepting him so much. Maybe, yeah, maybe he'll he'll go into doing Especially things again. Especially because of stuff like Doom Patrol, like that helped his career a lot. Well, and Texas Rising. Watch that show if you guys haven't. He's great in it. It's a great historical show. Well, and The Whale that just came true, out has true. insane reviews. I still haven't seen it, but people are raving about it. That's what he keeps getting awards for. But yeah, I think like overall pros, you know, getting to meet some of your favorite celebrities and idols, getting to talk with like-minded fans um, about stuff that we all love in common. Um, cons for the con (laughs) definitely were lack of space and kind of lack of food and yeah i I, guess that would be it i'm gonna add to i really really wish there was better more understandable maps yes i know that they can't necessarily say this person is here because it could change up but they only had maps for specific areas not for the entire thing so there was a couple of times where we were like, how do we even get to this part? Yeah. And when you're trying to time out your day well and really be able to do as much as you possibly can, you want to be able to know where you're going without getting lost. So I, I really wish they had that. Also, when we did the photo op with the Outlander guys... That was insane. Yeah, that was very unprofessional, and like I said, you would die because of how packed it was. They had no organization, so there was several photo... It was, you know, an epic photo off booth. They usually do all the cons, basically, if there's big photos, and everyone was just in a mob. It was like a penguin mob, like, of how yeah. close we were together. And you would have... Uh, they would call, like... Outlander Trio Group A and everyone who was in that group would raise their hand and you would all try to weave your way through the crowd to get into another set of lines but they would also be calling other people's photo ops at the same time so that while they're calling Outlander Trio they're also calling Oscar Isaac Shadow and Bone Duo yeah so there's just like a hundred people in the same area all waiting for the same for different people and because of like how many people wanted those photos you're not it's not going to be personalized like like we said we didn't really get to talk with the outlander guys because they wanted like go 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 get your picture now no talking when we saw them um you know it was so quick that we were like uh okay we'll we'll pose like this i guess and my hair was terrible with (laughs) with covid they it seemed like they didn't really want people to touch them in any way so we just like crossed our arms over our chest and we could hear the actors like giggling and i'm imagining you know they they probably think it's ridiculous that they can't like s- 
even really say hi because it's just so streamlined. I mean, I'm sure they're intimidated, like meeting thousands of people. And I'm like, sure, and like, but and like you wanted to get a really fun, a really fun photo of like you holding. No, or, them holding you, me. Yeah, not you holding them. No. That would be that would be too no. much. I really wanted to be like, can the three of you just kind of hold me up, like on my side or something? I wanted like a cute photo, and I wanted to be able to talk to them for at least a minute. I mean, I know it can't be a long time, but oh, spent a lot of money on that. We almost completely forgot Diana Galgan was also there too, yes. author Islander. Yes, and she was really nice and cool. She was. So we were able to get three books signed by her that was her like maximum which is understandable and i i really would have liked to have a couple like objects signed by her but she was only doing books and that's that's fine but she, you know she would actually like chat with you while she was signing them and they didn't force you to leave per se i mean we didn't you know spend more time than made sense to but she was nice and it was really nice to be like we love your show. Our mom loves your show. And your I, books. My, yeah, mom loves the books. I also love the books. I'm not fully done with them yet. I haven't read any of them. I yeah. think they're awesome. So it was just nice to be like, you basically changed our household. Mm-hmm. And Except for her dad. <laughs> yeah, he, he is, he's not into that stuff. But yeah, that was really cool to see her too and to have her like sign the books and yeah, know we, that it was signed by her there's and no question we really question. wanted to ask her questions about future books and shows like you outlander fans master raymond you all know what we're talking about when's that book series coming out who knows right he definitely needs one there's definitely story there yeah yeah i'm trying to think if there was anything else to add. um i think there should be better they should have had better advertisement for who was going to be there because, like, yeah, they had announced, like, hundreds of guests before, but there were some people there that they didn't announce at all, and you would only know if they were there if you followed, like, the Twitter pages. Like, comic book artist and writer Daniel Warren Johnston, best known for his Wonder Woman, Dead Earth, Bay Ray Bill, and his Image Comics run, which is escaping me right now, but it's about wrestling, he was there, I had no idea, and I got so pissed, because I didn't bring my Wonder Woman, Dead Earth comic, which... If you guys haven't read it, it's one of the most metal books ever. Way more metal than Dark Knight's metal, ironically. But he was there and was like, oh my god, that would have been so awesome to meet him and talk with him. But they didn't advertise him at all. Mm. So, And they did that a lot with a bunch of other people. I guess celebrities could just show up there. I don't know. It's interesting to me how there's so many comic book writers and artists that use all three of their names. Yeah, like their middle name and everything. Yeah, I feel like every time you're saying one of their names, you're like, such and such, such and such, such and such. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like like three James Tyne the fourth and mm-hmm. Sean Gore Murphy was there too. Um, like for his Batman White Knight stuff, he was really cool to talk to. Um, but we met him before in Rhode Island Comic Con. Really nice guy. He drew a Batman in my copy of um, Batman White Knight. Definitely meet him if you got the chance. Um, really cool guy. But yeah, I guess that's pretty much everything that there is to say about New York Comic Con, other than make more time to actually spend time there. Um, make friends when you're there, too, because like I said, we're all big nerds, and you can meet some really cool people. Like, we talked with a bunch of random strangers about things that we all like, you know, and it was really cool. Um, mm-hmm. I think definitely for us for next year, we, we'll try to do a two-day thing. Yeah, I mean, depending on who's there. Yeah, if there's a lot, I, I would say if there's more than maybe two people that you're like, yeah, I want to see them. Like, if anyone from New York Comic Con organization is watching this, it, get Jeff Johns there, and I'll pay for all four days. Just saying. If Jeff Johns is there. Or Gary Frank. Or anyone that did Green Lantern stuff, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> um... So yeah, um, definitely try and go to New York Comic Con if you guys are in near the city or have free time to go there. Um, and definitely check out some of the other cons too, like CD Horror Fest, like I made a video about before. Really cool for horror fans. And if you guys aren't really bit into these big, overly crowded, kind of anxiety-inducing cons, um, definitely try out some of the smaller ones near you, like 
us, like Trivicon, Rhode Island Comic Con, are closer, and they're a lot smaller, and I think because of that, it's a little bit more comfortable, because, mm-hmm. like, um, you know, like I said, you're not rushing all the time, it's not so crowded, and you get an actual chance to talk with some of your creators and have conversations with them. And we honestly kind of stumbled upon them just by looking it up and seeing what there is. There could be a lot more conventions around you that you don't know about just because, you know, advertising doesn't always work great if you, you know, don't have that kind of algorithm. And because of COVID-19, like, some cons are still, like, closed or getting reopens. Um, And they have conventions for everything. I went to a tattoo convention the other day. mm -hmm. There are so many different interesting things to do out there and sometimes even just to walk around and look at what there is you don't even have to go crazy yeah it's like disney world kind yeah, of mini disney world but without well like maybe some of them have rides maybe i don't know maybe. i think new york comic con had some vr things but we didn't it, do any of that it stuff. did have a vr thing and like one of those like sit in a pod oh yeah sort of deals but yeah definitely a fun experience to do and I feel like we're definitely hooked on conventions. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you guys have any questions about the con or want to talk about, share some of your stories about New York Comic Con or any cons that you've gone to before, um, post them down in the comments below and um, we'll respond to you guys as soon as we can. And we'd love to hear from you guys. Um, so, yeah, this has been Mr. Tape Ball and my sister. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, definitely, you know, subscribe. Um, and thank you guys so much for checking out my videos. They're still, it's still a young channel, uh, but I hope you guys appreciate it because we're all big fans, you know, in the world of nerdum. So yeah, bye. <laughs>